Hello, Mr. Philbert here. Uh, I've been toying with the idea of uh, hooking up a uh, light switch, which I'm liking so far, uh, with MySQL, and been running into lots and lots of problems, uh, including problems with the entity framework. I've tried the devart.net connector, and that didn't work. Uh, so the final the fix was using MySQL connector .net. 6.4.4 is the very latest one, as well as uh, there's a .NET fix, uh, or a fix for .NET on Microsoft's website, which I can post uh, shortly, or I might post it um, uh, at the end of this video. Uh, but uh, to prove a point, uh, what I've done is I can add a data source right here, add a database. And I'll input this, and uh, we'll hide the connection string. This is uh, just a local server. When I'm going to, I'll delete this connection here shortly. And test the connection. So everything is all hunky-dory so far, and let's choose a database, and and actually loaded Northwind onto MySQL. Go figure. If I just click OK, I'm going to run into a little bit of a problem. So I so the connection is working now, and previous the connection would work, uh, but there was a problem with the entity framework where you couldn't update any records once you built the solution. So now with the uh, .NET connector uh, 6.4.4, I've got a connection, but normally the dot, MySQL .NET connector, the persist security information is set to false. To change, We need to change that to true to allow the entity framework to connect and query the database for the tables. So now if I click OK, it's uh, the entity framework right now is out querying the tables and voila, we've got the tables. And as you can see to the right, I've got some tables already hooked up. So let's try, yeah, let's try a different one. Let's uh, hook up with the employees table. And click on, let's just call this employees. And here we go. We have the employees table. So this was also hooked up to the Northwind data, but I just made a different connection. And so now I can take that, create another screen. Uh, let's just go uh, list in detail screen. I happen to like that one. And employees. That'll work. I'll just run this. It seems to take a little bit of time to build. So I have different screens, and as you can see, it's uh, this is uh, this uh, MySQL data. It's uh, actually out on a different server, and this server is, uh, is in Arizona. I am up in Washington State. Uh, so it's loaded up all the employee data. Uh, that's, excuse me, this is all the customer details. Here's the employee list right here. I could have gone out to a different database on a different server someplace else to load up uh, different objects. Uh, and previous to this, the entity framework would not allow me to make any changes. So if I want to make any changes here to four, it would not work. It would uh, give me a, an entity framework error. 
So now I've made this change and I can save it. Ta-da! It worked. And um, to prove a point, uh, uh, not only does it work just in test or right off of Visual Studio, I made a previous sample pri uh, prior to going out and getting out the other database. Uh, here's my light switch, my SQL test. This is installed on my computer as a light switch basic, basic application. This is uh, just a little desktop application. It's reaching out to the server in Arizona pulling down all that data and uh, who did I make that change to? Yeah, I already made that change to Marie, Maria Anderson on the test. So if I change it back again and click Save in the desktop application, go back to Visual Studio, run it in debug, and let's look at that same person again. There it is, Maria Anderson. So I've changed it twice, one from the Visual Studio debug application and one from the desktop application, which I published and installed directly on my desktop. Hooray! Visual Studio Lite Switch working completely with MySQL. Thank you.